sorry, I know I look like a mess, but it is midnight on a Sunday night, February the 2nd, so it, I'm not gonna put on makeup for 10 minutes to shoot a video and then to go to bed right afterwards. But today, as the title says, I am doing my January wrap-up and my February TBR, including my hashtag a year -a TBR, because yes, I am doing hashtag a year -a again. So let's just get started. So the first thing that I read in February was Batman Eternal Volume 1 by Scott Lobdell. This was amazing. It is bat crap crazy and awesome. This is one of the newest titles in the new 52 to come out in the past six months or so. So if you are not caught up on Nightwing and Batgirl and all that, like I wasn't, then spoilers. Spoilers. So I don't recommend that you pick this up immediately. I recommend that you continue on with the new 52 and then eventually get to this. But me and my brother just kind of dived into the new 52 by reading this. Basically everything that can go wrong is going wrong in Gotham, including the Romans return back to Gotham. And on top of everything, Commissioner Gordon has been framed. That happened. Ooh, craziness, it is huge. Do you see how chunky this thing is? It took me like a week and a half to get through it. It is huge. It took my brother almost the entire month. Five out of five stars, better than Night of the Owls. This right now is the thing to beat. And then after that, I read Legacy of the Jedi and Secrets of the Jedi, both by Jude Watson. This is the bind up. This takes place all the way from when Dooku is a Padawan and goes all the way until after Revenge of the Sith. It follows short stories that all interlock with one another going across the different Padawan and Master sets of Jedi from Dooku, from Dooku as a Padawan to Dooku and Qui-Gon and then Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan and then Obi-Wan and Anakin and then after that. And it's actually was pretty good. The only thing is that it says in here that Dooku is not Yoda's actual Padawan and Dooku was Yoda's Padawan. Like personal Padawan to Yoda. Yes, Dooku was. The knight that he follows in here isn't true. One of the most interesting things, you find out that Dooku and Qui-Gon did not get along. They got along okay, but Qui-Gon didn't trust Dooku, like, at all, and Dooku was borderline abusive to Qui-Gon. Like, he wouldn't hit him or anything, but, like, he literally did things that no master is supposed to do. Like, he screamed a few inches away from Qui-Gon's face when Qui-Gon pointed out a flaw that his master had. It was something to read. I think I gave this like a four out of five stars because it was really interesting, especially to see Qui-Gon as a Padawan and why he is the master to Obi-Wan that he is, be considering his relationship with his master. Like you find out that he has never spoken about his master and his time as a Padawan to Obi-Wan ever. So that was an interesting read although extremely not canon. Then after that, I did indeed read Divergent, the official illustrated movie companion. This was an interesting read and a fun read to see the makings. Like I had no idea that the movie Divergent actually was in production and like, or pre-production before Divergent, the book came out. I had no clue about that. So that was really intriguing that they wanted to make it a movie before the book was even successful and of course it was successful which made it even more so and it was just interesting because it started before the book was finished and then was released after Allegiant came out so I think I gave that a four out of five stars just because it was fun. Then I read Not Here But Online Buso Rankin Volume 3 by Nobuhiro Watsuki. I think I gave it a three out of five stars. Buso Rankin is very much a typical shoujo, not shoujo, shonen manga. And for those of you who don't know, shonen is manga for boys ages like 8 to 15 or so. And it's okay. It's not phenomenal. It was just it felt very run-of-the-mill, very much like everything that a typical manga should be. And I can see why it didn't run for a huge long time like Rurouni Kenshin did. And I can see why Nobuhiro Watsuki is known for Rurouni Kenshin and not Buso Renken. So that much is very apparent now. I will finish it, but I don't think I'll ever own it. I, I don't think I'll watch the anime. I don't really care. After that, I read Darth Vader and Son by Jeffrey Brown. This was a 5 out of 5 stars. This was 10 minutes to read, and it was adorable and a load of fun. And I am so glad I found this for a dollar at Goodwill. I am so excited to have it on my shelves, and I've flipped through it like three or four times since. It's just 
so stinking cute five out of five stars oh if you're a star wars fan at all at all in the slightest you should pick these up because they are just hilarious and the best part is they keep quoting the movies and stuff and it's just, oh i can't wait to read the other three after that i read something that wasn't quite so good and that is star wars clone wars volume 7 they were brothers by w hayden blackman and brian ching this is so not canon and anakin is the whiny pain in the butt that he is in the movies and not the dude from the clone wars tv show that Cartoon network did that was actually quite good so um, i gave it a three out of five stars like i want to read all of them just because some of the stories are interesting the thing that was really bothered me the thing that really bothered me is that obi-wan kind of had this has this like crush on ventress it was painful to read it was painful to read all right then i finally finished since I started it at the beginning of December, Kakaishi Volume 1 by Yellow Tanabe. Kakaishi follows the story of the main character who's on the screen who has these powers and he and his neighbor are at war. They're families with the exact same powers and the exact same jobs who are fighting over it. Basically, they're protecting this land that used to be owned by some feudal lord that is now a school and that land tends to turn spirits into demons or demons into even stronger demons and things and so the families are warring over who has the right to protect the land which is stupid because they could should work together and the main character thinks it's stupid at the beginning he really is reluctant to even take part he thinks it's so dumb and doesn't want to do it and then he almost costs the other girl his life who and the two of them were very close even though their families at war. So it's kind of got this Romeo and Juliet vibe. While it's very amusing and the idea is interesting and it's pretty cool, the thing that's really difficult to follow is the grandfather of the main character. He is a douche canoe. He basically thinks his age gives him the right to be abusive and manipulative and this monster. And I don't think that's exactly what the Yellow Tanabe was going for, but that is exactly how it read to me. He reminds me a lot of my best friend's mom, who is this abusive psychopath woman. And you can't tell unless you're living it just how much of a nightmare it is to live with people like that. And the fact that it's a comedic relief is off-putting to me. I did read volume two a little later after the next book I'm going to show, but I don't know if I can continue this series. It's really long running, but I just can't stand the grandfather. I'm hoping that a demon kills him. That would be great. Then after that, at some point, I think it was after that, I read Avatar, The Last Airbender, The Search, Part 1 by Jean Lewin Yang and like eight other people, including Brian Konetsko and Michael Dante DiMartino, who are the creators of Avatar. This follows the story of Zuko trying to find out what happened to his mother and lots of stuff happens in it. This was a five out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. I knew I would because I'd read all of the first part, The Promise. Basically in Avatar, there is a plot point where you learn that Zuko, the, who was a villain at one point, his mother just disappeared. He literally went to bed, was woken up in the middle of the night by his mom saying, never forget who you are. I love you. What I'm doing is to, is to protect you. And Zuko's like, what? Because he's like eight. And it's just like, what, mom? And she's like, go back to bed. And then she kisses him on the forehead and walks away. And he wakes up the next morning and she's gone. The very last scene with Zuko beyond the tea house finale in the episode where he's still in his Fire Nation garb as he goes to his father and demands to know what happened to her. And then in Korra, it's never revealed. So frustrating! Even in episode one, in episode one, one of the characters asks Katara, who's not on the cover even though she's in this, what happened to Zuko's mother? And she says, well, that's a wonderful story. And then they announced shortly after that that they were doing these comics. And so there was the promise and then there was the search and so i read part one and i can't wait for parts two and three because i want to find out what happened to zuko's mommy i want to know i want to know i want to know i want to know i'm so glad i own you even if you were on the verge of falling to pieces the next book that i read is legend by marie lou <sighs> 
I got this in the summer back because I got a discount on Book Depository for being part of Booktubeathon, and I am glad I did, and I'm really mad that I didn't go ahead and just buy Prodigy and Champion because now I can't get my hands on Prodigy and I'm so frustrated because <sighs> I want to read it. I'll explain that in a little bit. But for those of you who aren't aware of what this story is about, Day and June are two polar opposites in this world where the United States is split up in between the Republic and the colonies, West Coast and East Coast. And they are in the Republic, which is the West Coast, California, LA, and there is a test. And every child has to take this test. And if you don't pass, you basically are forced into a labor camp to die. And very few people don't pass. Almost everyone passes. Day failed, and June is the first child to ever get a perfect score. And then, due to an event that takes place, the two of them are pitted against each other, and they have to figure out which side they're on, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. I really enjoyed it. There are problems. There are problems. June, for being a genius, is a moron. Very much so. It's extremely predictable. There is the insta-love thing, which is annoying. Ugh, it's very annoying. However, I thought that the characters were clever. I love how smart they are. I also love that neither of the main characters are Caucasian, even though in the comics they both are? The co graphic novel version? I was like, they both state they ain't Caucasian. The day is half Mongolian, half white, and then June looks Native American. I don't know what she is, and she doesn't know what she is because her parents are dead, but yeah. But really enjoyable. I thought the world disgusting. I just... I... Hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna have a full review of this. Actually, this is the only book that I read all month that's getting a full review. The main reason I'm not doing Batman Eternal, even though it got such a high score, is because as huge as it is, there's not enough plot for me to really go into. Let me guys, let me know. Do you want me to do a Batman Eternal review? I can do it, but I will be doing Legend. After I finished Kakaishi Volume 2 by Yellow Tanabe, again, like a 3 out of 5 stars, I read The Little Prince by Antoine de saint -Zupery. I can't say that word. I can't say his last name, I'm sorry. This is a classic. In fact, this was my TBR jar pick of the month to read for my classic. This was a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I heard about this through Tumblr and people on Tumblr talked about how they grew up on this and how it was like their childhood favorite, like, you know, The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings are for me. This was theirs. And then my best friend, Ellie Knight, hates it. She tried to read it and she despised it. And I can actually kind of understand why. This is a weird story. Basically, there is a pilot whose name is never revealed and he meets a little prince who, how he knows he's a little prince or how he's a prince, I don't know. And who that his name is, is never revealed, who comes from this itty bitty asteroid and comes down to earth. And the lesson of it is that as adults, it's very easy to get caught up in how frustrating the day-to-day -day humdrum of life is. It is boring to be an adult. It's very boring, I can assure you. And it's very annoying. And you get to do lots and lots of annoying things that as a kid you groaned and whined about and now you have to do them because if you don't do them they don't happen and then terrible things happen. Like I understand the point of it, I just thought the execution could have been done a little bit better and then at the very end where the little prince basically commits suicide and how it's kind of like glorified in this, I really didn't like that. So this is three out of five stars, 3.5 out of five stars. I don't really know. It's not very good. I'm glad I'm done with that. And then the last thing that I read in the month of January was Batgirl Volume 4 Wanted by Gil Simone? Simon? Simone? I don't know. Fernando Passerin and Jonathan Glapion Blonde. This is the fourth book in the Batgirl series of the New 52 by DC Comics. Batgirl is basically feeling terrible for some events that happened in Volume 3, and now she is being hunted. And on top of that, she's still trying to do her job as Batgirl and keep people from dying. And she starts wondering whether she wants to be Batgirl anymore or not. And it's really kind of crazy, and I really enjoyed it. Although the main villain for this, not the main villain overall, but the main villain in this one that throughout the majority of the comics in this is nauseating. Ugh. Oh my gosh, she's nasty. 
So I gave this like a four out of five stars. It was pretty good. Of course, I want to continue to read Batgirl, especially since, again, Batman Eternal. Spoilers. So this is everything that I read in the month of January that I have in person. It's actually not a lot. It's only technically two books and a bunch of little things. Although, again, Batman Eternal, that thing is like over 500 pages. That thing's huge for a comic. That took forever. But all in all, I'm glad that I took that time to really relax because I did manage to read one more book that I finished today, and that is Brother Band Scorpion Mountain by John Flanagan. Five out of five stars. Full review on this coming. Oh, good. So good. I am so glad that I took the time to take a step back and do that. I walked into this blind, so don't read the flappy or anything. That will really help with the, the predictability of Brother Band. And I loved it. I loved this. And I am so glad I took the time to just read what I felt like reading when I felt like reading and not like trying to power through it. That being said, however, again, I am doing hashtag a year -thon. So let's get started with my hashtag a year -thon books that I plan to read. This month's theme is diversity, which is the main reason I wanted to read it. Now the main book I wanted to read, again, was Prodigy by Marie Lu, because neither main of the main characters is Caucasian, and it would have been really fun to continue on with that trilogy. And I can't get my hands on it. It's on hold at the library for like a month and a half, and I am too broke because um, this is going up a day late because I went to a book signing, and that took all my money, and the gem show is this weekend, and for those of you who don't know, Tucson has the largest gem and mineral show in the world, and it's a family tradition for me and my mom and my friends now to go. So all my money went to those two things, so I can't just like buy Prodigy. Oh, I can't read that. However, I found several books on my shelves that count that I can read. The the first of which is from the library, and I said I would read this last month. I took my time and didn't really pick this up, and it is Boxers by Jen Luin Yang. Yeah, the guy who did The Promise. This talks about the Boxer Rebellion in China. Again, in case you missed my last month wrap-up in TBR, I don't know very much about that because I am American, and that was a UK Chinese thing, and so, like, they basically said there was a rebellion, and it was done by the Boxers, and I was like, who the heck are the Boxers? I don't know, but that's who it was done by. Okay, moving on! <laughs> Pretty much. And so this follows the main character who is Chinese and is part of the Boxer Rebellion, and there's a lot of blood and death in this, but nothing that looks, like, too overwhelming for me. So I'm gonna go through this. Hopefully I can get through that pretty quickly because it is a graphic novel and so a lot of people have gone through it quickly. And then off of my own shelves I found Elf Quest Captives of Blue, ba Blue Mountain by Wendy and Richard Peeney. Now while Cutter is a blue-eyed blonde elf, his wife, Lita, may have green eyes, but she is dark-skinned and from the sun folk, the desert elves. The humans that they interact with in this No, I actually haven't read the novels yet, and technically this is the third or the fifth. I'm not quite sure which one, but I'm going to go ahead and read it. I can just pick it up because I know the story back from words backwards and forwards and inside out and mirrored. So I can really do this. And then I have two more things that could count, maybe a third. And one I have not read and need to read is Tamora Pierce's Melting Stones. The main character is named Evie and she's basically Chinese or Asian looking um, because this is not Earth. It's a fantasy world so she is Asian looking whatever race that is. I don't really quite recall what she's called but she is being trained by Rose Thorne who is a lesbian and there's lots and lots of diversity in the Wheel of Magic series. This is the second book in the trilogy that is the third installment in the Circle of Magic universe. There's Circle of Magic, Circle Opens, and then I don't know what this is called, but it goes Will of the Empress, M Melting Stones, and then Battle Magic. And so I've read Will of the Empress, I need to read this, and then I'll read Battle Magic, and then I will have read all there is in that universe, I think. 
So that's all I've heard are released. I have had this for a while. I have had this on my TBR for like seven years. So I really need to get on it. Then there's two more things that I could read. One that I could start reading is Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist by Kazuki Takahashi Volume 7. I have been currently reading this for like six months or something very very slowly going through it i just got this at the library sale i thought i read it turns out this is the one that i am in the middle of obviously every one of the main characters there's four main characters on the cover right here japanese 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 american so but for me that's not really all that diverse since i read a crap ton of manga and the majority of them if they're not caucasian they're japanese and japanese is the norm caucasian is the secondary and then it's very rare to see anything else after that and then the last thing that i could read even though technically it, it does count would be rereading *Fullmetal alchemist by hiromu arakawa if i really run out of things to read which i'm not sure i will i will pick this up because although, again, Edward is technic is Caucasian, there are several things about him that make it diverse. The main one of which is that he is an amputee. When he was 11 years old, he and his brother tried to resurrect his mother, in case you haven't heard me say this all in my videos. They tried to resurrect their mother back from the dead using alchemy, but it's taboo. And the reason it's taboo is because it can get you killed. Edward lost his left leg, his brother lost his entire body, and was completely taken to the other side, and to get his brother's body spirit back and bind him into that armor right there, Edward sacrificed his right arm. The entire series, Edward's an amputee and his brother's in a suit. So I could read that. So for, for the readathon, these are the books that I could be reading. And I say could be because I have no clue what I'm going to read. All I know is that I'm going to shove one of these, probably Melting Stones or Boxers, into my bag when I go up for the signing. The next few books that I have on my TBR, one of which I don't have on me, it's at the library. I'm picking it up tomorrow morning before I go to pick up my friends. And that will be Red Hood and the Outlaws, Volume 2, The Starfire. That's what it's called. Authors' names are on the screen right now. So that's waiting for me, so I'm going to read that. I also started yesterday B Pokemon Adventures Volume 5 by Hidenori Kusaka and Mato. This doesn't count. The main character is blonde. So this doesn't count for diversity. But it was just a cute little thing to read. I own it and I'm thinking of selling it. It's not really winning me over. And I promise, I promise, this is the next book I'm going to read when I'm done with my readathon stuff. And that is Dreams of Gods and Monsters by Lanny Taylor. I said, saying I would read this for forever. And I promised you guys that I would read it last month and I just didn't get into it because I was really savoring Scorpion Mountain. I was really shocked I didn't finish that last month and didn't at least crack this open. This is next. This is my next big read. This is the main thing that I wanted to read. So this is coming. I promise. I promise. I promise after the readathon, I'm opening this up. I'm not going to read any more comics. I'm going to read this. And then the last thing that I'm thinking of reading for the month is the Jedi Apprentice series. This is The Rising Force, number one, which is by Dave Wolverton. Every other book in the series is by Jude Watson. As I said in my last haul, which I will link down in the doobly-doo, I wanted to reread this series because I just got volume 14 and I didn't read all of them in order. So I want to sit down and read them all in order. This is a childhood favorite. I have col been collecting them for years. I'm going to marathon it. It's not that hard. It's like a two-week thing. And I forgot something. I forgot to do my TBR jar reading challenge <laughs> but let me pull out something for the what do I need to read for this month let's see if I've got anything okay read a book that's not a novel a novella comic or manga oh I already have quite a few of those in my hand right here so I have quite a few of those right in here so that's definitely happening I will mark this done when I get through one of those Hey guys, sorry for the change. I am in the middle of editing my video late at night, hours after it was supposed to go up. I am very sick, so I am having a hell of a time trying to edit it. I'm sorry. But I want to talk about my 2015 reading challenge that was created by Pop Sugar. I decided to go ahead and do this. I decided to change how I was going to do it. I am not going to double up 
on books in this challenge like I said I would. So I have quite a few things marked off and I have my list of what books went with what. So the first thing on here, a book with a non-human characters. That is Buso Rankin Volume 3 by Nobuhiro Watsuki because there are creatures called homunculi that aren't human. A book by a female author, and for that I'm going to go with Legacy of the Jedi. A book with a one-word title, Kakaishi, Volume 2, by Yellow Tanabe. A popular author's first book, Legend, by Marie Lu. A book from an author you love you haven't read yet, Secrets of the Jedi, by Jude Watson. An award-winning book, The Little Prince, by Antoine... I can't say his name. A graphic novel, that's Batman Eternal. A book by an author you haven't read before, that is Darth Vader and Son by Jeffrey Brown, and a book you own that you haven't read before, The Search Part 1 by Jean Luen Yang. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to see more. I promise I'll get back on schedule again. I am sorry that it was late this week because I was at the signing. I am bringing you guys along. Expect to see a vlog all about me, meaning Marissa Meyer and the what's gonna happen at the Lunar Ball and me and LA Knight are talking about maybe a giveaway. Let you know if you're interested in that. Alright, good luck with your reading. I hope you had a great January and I hope that the year's doing well and I'll see you in the next video, which will be my signing. Look for that. Doing hashtag earthon again. I just hit my chin. <laughs> uh, this is. Bleh. Then after that, I read Saint Leia the Eagle. Okay, here. I'm so stinking tired. Oh, I'm running on empty. There is a test. Bleh. Thank you. On Tumblr, I. Bleh. That's a weird name. Sorry. I'm sorry. If I'm insulting anybody. I'm just like I don't know how to say that. Anyway, and I have a TBR. Somewhere. My last year, last year, this is a medieval world, a medieval world, I think, I'm not real sure, which I'll link up down below, I, which I will link up, Blech. that makes no sense. So, definitely happening, these, oh, uh, I'm holding that backwards, <laughs> and a, uh, uh, yeah, it will be, bleh.